Okay, uh, good afternoon. Uh, thought we had a good week of practice, you know, finishing up with the red zone today. Um, it's, you know, it's, we call it Fast Friday. The practice is about 55 minutes, uh, so it's uh, really quick for us. Mostly featuring down there in the red zone, but we get some field work as well, uh, short yardage, some goal line stuff. So um, really good, and I thought the guys executed well. So, you know, the main thing we're talk talking to our players about this week really are just one play at a time, all 11 on the same page, you know, and that's just about – that's just really execution. And uh, that's what we're trying to get done on a more consistent basis. You know, we're looking for development of our football team, you know, in a lot of ways uh, in this game, um, you know, in terms of uh, just the core principles, you know, and then doing those things better um, as, we, as we work through the week. So uh, we're excited about going out to MetLife, you know, and uh, having the competition there with the New York Giants. And uh, they're a good football team, very similar to us, you know, starting out new, a young crew, um, you know, good running game. You know, really, really uh, younger on defense, so it's a little bit of the same type of uh, matchup. So we're excited about the competition going forward, and our preparation leading into this game. I'll open it up to questions from there. Do you have any concerns about Cairo being able to play Sunday? Uh, Cairo is uh, was out today with personal. Do you guys plan on bringing another kicker in case he can't go? Uh, I'm not answering that question. He's he's got a personal issue, and we'll see where it goes from there. Obviously, each of them made their debut last week. Uh, so are there any challenges in evaluating them with only one game this season? And I guess, what do you expect? How do you prepare for them? Yeah, I mean, they're, they're both good athletes. You know, obviously nice uh, edge rushers, and they're very athletic, and they certainly create a challenge for our offensive tackles. You know, so you have to do certain things, you know, uh, at certain times, you know, like every other team does. You know, you'll chip them, you'll bang them out of there with their back, and, and uh, they certainly create a big challenge for us, for sure. What did you see out of Jalen Jones last week and with Jalen Johnson out? What are you looking forward to seeing in this second game? Yeah, just more more consistency. We thought he had some really good snaps, uh, really good coverage snaps. Uh, he did a nice job, you know, in the run game, you know, keeping the big cup. Uh, that was a big issue. Uh, that's always for the corners. I thought he did a nice job of that. And uh, just more consistency, really, uh, from him. But he had a good week of practice. We had an end-of-game question for you. Did you guys consider the scenario that if after you called the time or after the Texans called timeout, that they might let you score if you ran a play, did that like was that something you guys had talked about? Uh, no, I didn't see it as a freeway situation. We call that freeway. We did not see that as in that situation there. Just curious, as, as a defensive guy, now that that I mean, you might never have to employ that strategy yeah. in your entire career. But is it has it been odd to like? have to prepare for something like that? No, I mean, they, we started doing that a while back, you know, so I wrapped my brain around it. So, uh, yeah, it's it's a strategic thing that you have to do uh, in order to win the game, so I see no problem with it, but it's very limited when you can use it. What has Justin's week of practice been like? It's been good. It's been good. You know, like I said earlier in the week, he's been positive, upbeat. He's been, uh, you know, taking charge of the offense and uh, – Working on his footwork, working on his timing, working with the receivers, you know, with the timing. So uh, we're excited to see progress this week. If he can put up some numbers on Sunday, I know you're going to do what you want to win or what you, what you need to try to win. But if he can put up some numbers, what would that do for him? And it, maybe even for you as the head coach, you know, you, you had to answer questions the last couple of weeks about your pass attack. Yeah, I mean, I think it's just growth. You know, it really comes down to taking one performance at a time and just growing. You know, whatever that is, you know, it's about having growth. You know, last week I thought he had some good explosive passes, you know, in there. So we took the positive from there and, uh, and we're growing from that, that point. See it on the stat sheet, though, what would that mean? I know you see growth, but to have it obvious for the world. Yeah, I think that's good for anybody. I mean, it's like when Roquan had all his stats last week. I mean, that fosters confidence. You know, you get 16 tackles and you get the game-winning interception. That certainly has, you know, puts you in the right direction and says, hey, you know what? I can see it visibly on the stat sheet and I can see it in my play. So I think that's true for anybody uh, going forward. Matt, as a defensive head coach, when you see a rookie like Evan Neal, who's really struggled for the Giants, he's talented, but he's had a rough start. How do you go about attacking that? Weakness. Yeah, I mean, it's like anything else. It's a, it's a matchup. You know, there's matchups across the board, and, you know, they're going to try to attack what they think is a favorable matchup, and so are we. And uh, that's just the way it goes. That's the way that's the NFL. It's about player on player. I mean, it's about creating that matchup, the one on one that you can get uh, if it's a coverage guy or a receiver or offensive lineman versus a D lineman. So those are the, really the critical matchups that you look at during the course of uh, the game, and we're always trying to get those. How do you sort through? How many snaps are appropriate for Khalil Herbert? 
Yeah, you know, you, you, we always go through, and I'll talk to the guys here in the next, you know, 24 hours, you know, before we get on the plane and talk to them about, you know, substitution review, what happens if this guy's, you know, what's his, what's the rep count for each guy? I'll go through that with those guys. And then, you know, what's who's the pair and the spare? Who's the guy if somebody goes down? What happens? Uh, what's our what's our situation at that point? And uh, we go through that uh, during the course of the next 24 hours. What did you like about his stamina, having to play a, a lot? No, I, I like it. I like it. And and he's and that that goes for the offensive line too. The offensive line receivers, the whole offensive group, and the whole really the whole football team has good stamina. It's because of how we practice. It's how we prepare. Um, and the guy's been pushing real hard since training camp, and they got that base down now. So once we get playing in the games and the guys start blowing and going during games, you know, then that stamina keeps building. So I think it's a good thing. And then we got to be mindful as coaches of when to push and pull back to make sure they're fresh for Sunday. What have you, what have you seen from Tristan on kick return? Tristan on kick return? Yeah, uh, like I said, he's, you know, we got to do a better job sustaining blocks. You know, I think I said that on Sunday or maybe it was Monday. But um, And he's doing a good job, but he th I know he's got to do a little bit better. I think he can utilize his speed better, uh, set up the returns a little bit better, and he knows that. And he's going he's gonna to get that done here uh, coming up. Talk a lot about clean slates for guys, and one of those guys we talk about uh, with that is, is Eddie Jackson. So if you, the head coach, when you give this guy this fresh start, this clean slate, and yeah. then he responds two picks in three games, what does that mean to, to you as a, as a coach, as a teacher? No, I mean, it, you know, it's really, uh, and that's a good question um, because that's really why you coach. Um, that's really one of the big reasons you coach. You, know, you give guys second chances, you give guys clean slates, and you treat guys with respect, um, and you, you uh, challenge them um, for what they can, who they can be and what we can do for our football team, and you coach them up every single rep. And when a person buys into that, uh, you know our standards, the way we do things, man. That's that's a, it's a pleasure to see as a coach, and because he's getting enjoyment out of it. You know he's in the best shape of his life. You know he's uh, leading the football team and he's playing really well. And uh, it's a joy to see him have joy playing the game. What is your process with with Robert Quinn when he's not feeling well? How do you determine? Okay, you should be home. You should not be home. And I'm curious, just from your experience with COVID in, in Indianapolis, does that change the way you look at if a player's sick, whether he should be around or not? Um, no, I mean, it's that's up to the medical staff. Yeah, it's up to the medical staff. So when somebody says, you know, we, we listen to them as the illness, you know, that's that is what it is. And whatever that situation may be, when they're back, they're back, and then we plug them in and play. When you look at Daniel Jones and getting together with Brian Dable, is there anything you noticed that that pairing has done to maybe elevate – Jones's play or having Jones do different things? Yeah, well, first of all, Brian Dable's an excellent coach. Um, you know, him and I were together back in Cleveland a long time ago, and so we've known each other for a long time. And he's done an excellent job, got an excellent track record, uh, can really coach up the quarterbacks, does a great job on offense. Um, now he's doing a great job leading that team. So, um, you know, much respect to him. Uh, but uh, you can see what he's done with the guy. You know, he's uh, better rhythm, better timing. Um, you know, and he's a work in progress, just like you know our guy is. You know, so we'll see where it is. And uh, but again, I can't say enough about Brian for sure.